Hey guys, today I bring you our 25,000 mile update since we got this Tesla Model Y performance back in March of 2021. In this video, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can regarding our ownership experience. How has our Model Y held up? How is it on long trips? How is it to own an EV? as your daily driver without a home charger. How much longer do we plan to keep it? Will we buy it again? I will also give you a full cost to one breakdown. For those of you that are new here, I'll tell you why we bought it. In March of 2021, I was ready to buy a new car and I had been looking at Tesla for years, so it was kind of an aspirational purchase. I had made up my mind about getting a Tesla way before the Model Y with the introduction of the Model 3 because it was a very cool EV that was within our budget. So for the first time we could afford a Tesla and we opted for the Model Y instead of the Model 3 just because we thought it would be more practical. We chose the performance package because I wanted the insane acceleration, the slightly more aggressive looks and we got it in white exterior just because it's a free color and I like cars in lighter colors and we opted for the white interior just because I think it looks way better than the stark black interior. First, I'll give you a list of what I really like about our Model Y to this date and then I'll give you a list of the negatives. Number one, the very first thing that we absolutely love about our Model Y is the cost of maintenance after 25,000 miles, zero dollars. Well, more like four dollars if you consider a gallon of windshield washer fluid. That's right, the Model Y doesn't require any maintenance after 25,000 miles. For context, I would like to offer you a comparison. If we can agree that the Tesla Model Y is a premium vehicle, then I'll make a comparison with another premium SUV of about the same price, which is the Mercedes-Benz GLC. By your first 25,000 miles, it would have called for schedules A and B services, which combined will set you back at around $1,000 to $1,200. But to be fair, let's bring it down to a Lexus RX 350, as we know that the Lexus maintenance tends to be cheaper than Mercedes. It calls for maintenance every 5,000 miles, but the first two services are usually complementary, at least that was our experience with our RX 350. So by the 25,000 mile mark, it would have called for a few services that would have set you back anything from six to $700. So as you can see, the Tesla Model Y is a breeze to own because of the simplicity of an EV. Not only is it cheaper to maintain, it also saves you multiple trips to the service center with all of the hassles associated with taking time off work or using days off to take care of it. Number two, autopilot. For us that live in California and that we find ourselves in bumper to bumper traffic almost every day, having autopilot really eases the pain of driving. And I really liked it when Tesla made full self-driving available as a monthly subscription because we had the chance to use it a few months off and on instead of having committed to buying it for an extra $10,000. And I honestly don't believe that it's worth the premium, especially now that it went up to $12,000. But autopilot is amazing. I've tried many other EVs with similar features and none of them come close to Tesla's autopilot. Number three, which is very closely related to number two is the technology in the Model Y. It keeps the car fresh with constant over the air updates. So you know that you're always driving a car with the latest software updates. Number four, Tesla supercharging network. I cannot say this enough. We drive a lot. We do a lot of weekend trips and recharging is annoying period. But Tesla supercharging network is as good as it gets for an EV, so there's always a charging station nearby. But I want to hear from those of you that have cars from other brands, that have EVs from other brands. I want to know how is your experience once you hit the road. Because in the city, almost all the EVs are the same. Number five, the driving experience. It's just a great vehicle overall. It's fast, it's roomy, convenient, practical, relatively comfortable. The seats are very soft and supportive and it sits for adults with plenty of room for their stuff. Visibility is great for all passengers and the massive glass roof offers a very unique and premium experience. The sound system is great. It integrates your phone through Bluetooth and you can link your Spotify, Netflix or YouTube accounts to get full access to the media you're used to. Now let's go with the negatives and I'll give you five just to keep it balanced. Number one has to be range. The advertised range of the Model Y performance is 303 miles and I was never remotely close of achieving it. At one point I was able to get about 260 miles but as of late a full charge reached 286 miles. I'm going to be transparent and I meant to charge it to 100% but it hasn't moved for the last five minutes so I'm going to stop here right now. So I can fairly say that the new charging limit of my Tesla Model Y is 286 miles and not 303 like when I first bought it. I charged 149 miles worth of range and the cost if I would have paid for it would have been $24.90.
and software updates have made the projected usable range close to what I get in real life, but I find myself having to constantly charge the car to avoid running below 20% because below 20% you lose center and other features. So you don't want to fall below 20% and you don't want to charge beyond 80% because it's a waste of time. So that leaves you with about 180 miles of usable range to drive around and that's not much. Number two, tire and wheel choice. These wheels are massive and the tires are very slim and they do very little to absorb road imperfection, thus you end up with this bumpy ride that can be annoying for some. I wonder how much of this can be alleviated by opting for the 19 inch wheels that come stock in the Model Y long range. The rim protrudes beyond the tire, so any minimal contact will scratch your wheels. So for some of you that do a lot of city parking, be ready to dent the wheels. Yeah, and I know that some of you will say that that's apparent error, but these wheels give you very little room for error and all four wheels have been damaged after 25,000 miles. Once by my wife, twice by me, and once more by my brother-in-law. Let me show you what I mean. Damage. 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 More damage. In an interesting turn of events, this is not my Model Y. This is a random MYP that I saw at the mall. Number three, the lack of a 360 camera. For a vehicle with such poor real visibility, a 360 camera should be a must in order to give you a good reference of where the vehicle is going when you're about to park. Also, when pulling into a parking spot, the lack of a front camera that is situated closer to the ground doesn't let you see where the vehicle is going when you're about to hit the curb or the sidewalk. Number four, the road noise. This vehicle is loud at highway speeds. And as I said, we do a lot of highway driving and that's when I wish that the vehicle was a little bit more quiet. With autopilot and the comfy seats, a more quiet highway experience will take the Model Y to the next level. How loud is it? Well, compare the cabin noise to that of a modern Honda Civic, obviously minus the engine sound. And when you consider the fact that the current price of the Model Y performance is scratching the $70,000 mark, I think that's unacceptable. And number five, the lack of more options and body refreshings. The Model Y performance has been carrying over the Uber Turbine wheels for about three years. In other brands, not only do you have more wheel choices at the time of purchase, the choices usually update every year to keep their models fresh, not with Tesla. There's nothing to look up to every year as the updates can come at any time, but it hasn't happened with the wheels. It is virtually the same car aesthetically as when it debuted. Most car manufacturers offer a model mid-cycle refresh at about the third year, but now with Tesla, you get the same car down to the same wheels. Another thing that you have to consider is that this 21 inch Uber turbines is a, a staggered setup. Therefore, the wheels cannot be rotated with shortens the life of the tires. Okay, we don't have a lot of time because we're running out of sunlight, but I just wanna show you, give you an update on the current condition of my car. The tires are holding up pretty well, but there's damage from hitting a pothole right here. So I think this tire needs to be replaced. And then we move to the back, and there's more curve rash, where here, and then this other tire may need to be replaced as well. Look at this, this is nasty right here. So the thread is okay after 25,000 miles, but there's damage that may jeopardize the integrity of the wheel of the tire. And then more curve rash right here and then as well as on this one. As far as the brakes, they're almost untouched. This is one of the things I love about this car is that the brakes, you hardly ever use them because of the regenerative braking. So the brakes, I will say, I mean, I'm not a master mechanic, but I'm, you still have like 90% of life. For those of you that follow my channel, remember I made a video about how my wife hit a small animal. So I had to make a quick fix on this trim but I already called the insurance because I'm gonna make a full claim because there's more damage than meet, meets the eye let's see if you can capture it if I can capture this with the camera and then another thing that I want to talk about is I want to test to the quality of this paint um, this I live in a desert area California and we've driven in the Arizona desert Texas desert plenty of times and the amount of damage from rock chipping is minimal to non-existent. I do see one here, but most of the imperfections that you may see on the video, it's just bugs because my wife just went to a bustle and I did, gave it a quick wash, but it didn't go in detail about removing all these bugs. But the paint holds up pretty well. And then moving on to the interior. Again, this interior is 
very very nice very practical very easy to clean and the sticks continue to be super comfortable and they have very minimal signs of wear and tear almost none so as much as the vinyl is super soft i was expecting a little bit more wear and tear with the use after 19 months more than two years but no and then remember i have dogs and what I love about these seats is that you, just, you, can, you can just wipe them off. You can see they're a little bit dirty right now. Recharging on the road is getting a little bit old. And let me say why. The first 10,000 mile video, I just realized that I, that I recorded that video right at the one year mark. So in the second year, we put 15,000 miles, which is a lot. Those 15,000 miles were mostly highway miles because my wife has a super short commute to work. She only drives about maybe less than two miles to work. And whenever I take this car to work, which, which is about once a week, I only drive about 20 miles to work each way. So as you can see, most of the miles that we put in this car are on weekend uh, trips. And that's when it gets a little bit annoying to stop so many times to recharge the car on just a normal three, 400 mile round trip. In the summer, I made that trip to Florida and I'll leave you the link to that video as well. So we put 4,000 miles on that trip alone and then we have made my wife went to El Paso in June and then I went and then she went again just a couple of weeks ago. So this year has been crazy for this car. We've taken it to Northern California a couple of times as well. So most of those miles are highway miles. Ideally, this charge this car will charge about from about 20% to 80% in anything between 20, maybe 18 to 25 minutes. And but when the chargers are to capacity then it's it's a little bit slower i do think that the best way to experience an electric vehicle is by having a home charger whether you have solar or not just having a home charger to where you can plug it at night it will make this experience so much different but once you get on the road it's going to be the same for almost any ev and then as i mentioned earlier with the supercharging network this is the best case scenario for any ev because there's going to be superchargers everywhere you go in the united states especially here in california we're doing bumper to bumper we're going nine miles an hour and the car is going to stop and it's going to resume as needed this is a very likely scenario for those of you that live in big cities like here in san diego maybe la my wife does uh, like a monthly visit to la and then she gets stuck in this horrendous traffic but this is where model y shines because autopilot is amazing as far as full cell driving i don't think it's worth the money because right now it's twelve thousand dollars and i thought it was too much money when it was ten thousand so i'm glad they offer us a monthly subscription that way maybe you can get a taste of what it is maybe you like it and if you don't like it you can always cancel it and you don't have to uh, come out with twelve thousand dollars out of pocket honestly i just don't remember the last time i drove it in sport mode months maybe I just don't remember when. Sometimes when we have people over, we go pick them up from the airport, we can throw the stuff in the back and everybody goes home in comfort. Make sure you go through the list of videos that I made about this car. I did make an update video of uh, 1,000 miles, 5,000 and 10,000. I skipped the 20,000 and now here we are talking about uh, the 25,000 mile mark. I think those videos are important because I go more in detail about the features about this car and just things in general regarding to the Tesla Model Y. And this is more about an update on the ownership experience and maybe new things that i haven't mentioned before or what i plan to do with the car and lastly the cost of ownership so i wrote this list down so that i can give you exact numbers we paid over sixty-three thousand dollars for this car taxes were about forty nine hundred dollars and then we paid some fees so the total price of the car was close to sixty nine thousand dollars we uh, put a down payment of eighty nine hundred dollars and the monthly payment is eight seventy five the amount of the loan was fifty eight thousand four hundred three dollars we made 19 payments of $875 for a total of $16,624. The outstanding balance today is $43,826. I just did a quick Carvana trading offer and they offered $45,800. So that means that we have an equity of a little shy of $2,000. As of today, if you combine the down payment and the monthly payments, we have paid $25,556. The finance charge up to date is over $2,000 and money that I will never see again is uh, $7,663. So that's money that is combined between the finance charges and, uh, and the taxes. If I were to walk away from a Tesla Model Y right now, I would have had about a little shy of $2,000 in equity. So after 19 months of driving a Tesla Model Y, it would have cost us about $23,583. But if I took the time to sell it privately, I would get around $50,000. So that would be a little better. In summary, owning your Tesla Model Y has been a great experience. How long do we plan to keep it? 
Well, those of you that follow my channel know that I don't keep cars too long. I change cars about every two years and it seems that that will be the case with the Model Y. Will it be replaced with another Tesla? No. Will it be an EV? No. At this point, I don't have a home charger and I don't feel like spending $3,000 to have one installed. I'll let you know when the time comes and for now, I'd just like to say that the Model Y continues to deliver a great driving experience. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.